President Mohamed Bari approves immediate payment of withheld salaries of university lecturers, but ASU still going ahead with strike. And President Mohamed Bari also calls for the decongestion of prisons and speedy trial of cases in the country. This is Plus Politics, and I am Benny Ock. President Mohamed Bari has approved the immediate payment of the two months withheld salaries of university lecturers that refuse to enroll in the Integrated Payroll and Personal Information System, EPIS. While reacting to this order, the national president of ASU, Professor Abiodun Ogunyemi, insisted that the lecturers would not resume work because the strike wasn't about EPIS, that the payment would have paved the way for a meaningful dialogue with the government. And joining us to have a conversation on this is a legal practitioner, Mr. Dele Farotimi, live in the studio. And also via phone, we have Dele Ashu, the ASU chairman of UNILAC. Good evening, Mr. Ashu, and thank you for joining us. And thank you for this invitation. And also, forward to me, thank you for joining us on Plus Politics tonight. Thank you for having me, Ben. Now, Mr. Ashiro, the President Mahmoud Bari has approved the immediate payment of the two months withheld salaries of, of, um, of the union, of, of the lecturers. How do you react to this? Well, it's uh, like the national president said, it is a welcome development. But there are some disturbing reports from some branches where we were told that they were being asked to surreptitiously fill the IPPIS form and also supply their BVN number. This is unacceptable to our union because the impression we got was that the president had asked that our members be paid unconditionally. If you are now asking us to submit BBN and fill IPPIS form, it means that we are being taken back to where we started from. Also bear in mind that the reasons for declaring our strike was not simplicity on IPPIS. IPPIS is just one of the issues. We have the questions of our unresolved renegotiation of our agreement with the federal government. Now, Mr. Shu, we're going to come to that in just a bit. But does this does this now leave any room between the union and the federal government for for the deliberations on whatever outstanding issues there 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 there, there could have been? Of course, uh, of course, our union is always open to dialogue. We have never turned down any opportunity to discuss with government or any other person who may wish to intervene in the crisis. But what we are saying is that if our salaries are to be paid, they must be unconditional. Oh, Mr. Farrell, to me, you want, you, want to, you want to react to this quickly and your thoughts, please? Frankly speaking, what tends to happen with us all the time is that we, we put out... Imagine Nigeria as a house on fire, but we tend to just find a room in the house where we want to put out the fire. The problem is that you can't address the ASU problem in a silo. The entirety of the argument related to IPs or whatever they're it calling is, yes. it is, is essentially about university autonomy. What is happening is that they are carrying on a dialogue of ventriloquists. The federal government is carrying on a dialogue that is completely different from the substantial issue itself. Which is the 2009 the agreement. The funding yeah. of the university yeah. system. But when you're discussing the funding of the university system as though it might be debated in isolation with the issue of funding of education in Nigeria generally, what you then find is that because you cannot have a holistic solution to the problems, the moment you thought one was resolved, something else will be popping up. It's only ASU in the university system 
that sees the need to be fighting against IPs. Why? Why is it that all the other unions cannot understand the fact that there is a common interest? Oh, they, they're coming out to say they're, they, they don't understand it. So at what withdraw, point in the day? From it at what yeah. point in the day? And then why? Of, of all the stakeholders within the university system, even found common cause to unite them so that they find this common reason to unite behind. Mm -hmm. Are the students on board? Is NASU on board? What about the other unions? Sanu. Yeah, Mr. Shu, you want to react to that um, quickly? I mean, now, there were other unions that, were, that backed the integrated payroll and personal information system prior to this time. And now most well, of these unions are, are, are stepping back. What could be informing this decision? Well, uh, the, what I, my, my reaction to that is that when the agitation against IPPI started, all of us were on the same page. For some inexplicable reasons, they decided to go and enroll. But as I speak with you today, all of them are regretting that action. And some of them are already threatening to pull out of the IPPI's uh, enrollment. They, for what, as a union of intellectuals, we cannot coerce people to join our struggles if they don't understand it. But there is no single argument that we have conversed against IPPIS that we are not today being vindicated. So whether other unions on campus joined or not, we have a right to defend the interest of our members like we have always done in the past. Now, there's also the issue of the, the federal government asking your union members to, to submit their BVN for payment. And, and your association, the union seems to be opposed to this. Can you clarify on this to us, please? It is ridiculous to be asking people to submit BVN. What we were told when we were enrolling on BVN is that we should not disclose it to a third party. And our salaries have been paid without BVN. The last salary that they paid was without BVN. So why would you now de demand for BVN today? Because we are insisting that you must pay our salaries. Now, now the, gov the federal government had previously withheld electoral salaries over their refusal to register with, with EPs, which was, which was the cross of this issue. Now, do you see this as a positive development in resolving the long-standing issue between both parties? Now that the salaries will be paid, and you did mention earlier when you were speaking that it's beyond, it's beyond EPs, it's, be it's beyond the salaries that, that will be paid. So let's, let's bring everything now to the table, Mr. Ashiru. Yeah, you see, we have basically some issues that uh, we are engaging government on. The first is the renegotiation of the 2009 agreement, which had been long overdue. Our government is only, only using IPPIS as a distraction. And now that it, has, it is clear to everybody within the university system that the IPPIS cannot you know, be used as a payment uh, platform for those who work in the university. If our salaries are paid, we will then summon a meeting of the National Executive Council, who will now take a holistic look at the situation in the country, particularly at the wake of this global pandemic. And then the union in its collective wisdom we decide what way forward between us and the federal government. It will be too premature for me now to predict which direction our union will go. And in any case, the salaries that we are to be paid are for jobs that we have already done. So federal government is really not doing university teachers any favor by asking that our salaries be paid. Now, Mr. Farouk, I, I come to you now. Now, you, you hear the, this, this, the ASU chairman, you know, like yeah. chapter speaking. And yeah. now, wh why do you think there's so much opposed to, to EPs and also the federal government asking for their BVN to be, to be submitted for payments to be made? As I had said earlier on, the substantive issues are not being addressed. You, you think it's beyond the union? It's, it's beyond it's the entire it's beyond, education no, no, the sector. Ed, the entire educational sector itself requires serious emergency attention. 
it beats me all over how the federal government expects any one of the universities to begin to carry on lectures remotely when the infrastructure to do that is obviously lacking. That is a problem nobody is talking about at the moment. We're focused on the university's lecturer's salaries. So we're dealing with ringworms, whilst the leprosy itself is festering. So whilst you might be continuing this distractive argument about IPs, about um, the factionalization of the university system itself, the substantive issues, unless they are dealt with, unless the Nigerian universities exist in an environment where they are able to do what universities are meant to do, we're just wasting time. Mr. Shri, do, do you agree with Mr. Farrell to me on what he just said? Uh, well, yeah, in a way, he's correct. That has been the struggles of our union over the years. Like we have always said, no society can rise above its level of educational development. And that is why societies that are making progress all over the world today, they don't joke with their education sector. So I agree with him to the extent that the education system in Nigeria needs an overall. But I hope that I am not thinking that all other issues should be put in advance until this grandiose overhaul of the education system is completed. What Asu is saying is that if government implements the agreement that we have, including the memorandum of understanding and memorandum of action, which government itself freely signed onto, it is our conviction that we will be able to take the university system to a level that is comparable to those that we have across the world. But as, a, as we speak today, there's a lot of decay in the education system, and that is the real reason why ASU is always picking up the conflict with the federal government. And do you agree with that, Mr. Farrell, to me that that is the real issue ASU is pursuing, given the stance? Look, my people will say that if you give the madman a hole, I know, he would first of all take care of his own portion of the farm. ASU is entirely correct. It is in their self-interest and is an enlightened selfish interest as well to pursue qualitative education in Nigeria. Yes. And there is nothing wrong in them as a union asking that the interest of their members be taken care of. That is their brief and remit as a union. As a citizen of the country, my interest goes beyond the creature comfort of ASU members. Whilst I accept and I believe that a liberal deserves his wage, and the university system, the people working within that system, should be remunerated properly. My interest and focus, they are not grandiose. They are entirely focused on having a better society, and that can only happen when there is a holistic view of the problems we have. I have no problem with ASU or anyone who has paid, who has what, getting paid. Mr. Shiro, the national president of ASU, Professor Abiodun Ogunyami, said that the lecturers would not resume work because the strike was not only about EPs. Now, do you think this stance is going to shift anytime soon? If yes, on what possible recommendations would this stance shift? Like I told you earlier, the comment by the president is a response to the question that he was asked. Like I mentioned, if our salaries are paid, the president of our union cannot unilaterally call off our strike. When all other uh, considerations are put together, a national executive council meeting will be called that will review you know, the situation, including the payment of salaries. And then on the basis of that, the world will be briefed about the position of ASU. But like he said, it is a demonstration of goodwill from government, but it must be unconditional. 
Now there is a directive from Mr. President for the salaries to be paid. What is the way forward? What do you say happening with your association and the federal government in days to come? Oh, well, we'll continue to monitor the situation. And then when we get to the bridge, we will cross it. All right, Mr. Delia Shiru, Asu, President of Unilac Chapter. Thank you very much for joining us and for your contribution on PLOS Politics. Thank you very much. It's my pleasure, and thank you for this opportunity. You're welcome. Thank now, you, sir. Now, follows me back to you. I mean, um, you, you're rightly saying that they're basically pursuing their own interests beyond what they should be looking at holistically, the educational sector in Nigeria. What are we missing out on here? And what is the association also missing out on? Because this, this, um, this, um, this agreement predates as way back as 2009, and it always will call in every brahaha an issue the federal government seems to be having with, with ASU. I'll take you a little further back than 2009. I entered the university system in 1985. And by the time I was exiting, 12 years later, the same argument that are being rehashed today were already present in the university system. Now, ASU is a trade union. Like all unions, the interest of its members is foremost. Is foremost. But I must concede that for that interest to also be sustainable, ASU has been pretty altruistic in its pursuits over the years. But there is a measure of battle weariness that sets in after a while. And what is done is that ASU has become completely focused on the interest of its member, sometimes losing sight of the need to carry along the other components of the university system so that the battles that have become fragmented might be united and the students and every staff in the university system should be singing from the same aim sheet. If the university system is functional, if it's working, if the average Nigerian sees the Nigerian university as being capable of imparting knowledge, if they are truly centers of excellence, we probably would not be in the mess that we are in today. And all I'm saying really is that whilst I recognize the validity of ASU's struggle, right, there is I, a I need just to, to come look, to that. I, no, 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 no. Yeah. Yeah. The struggle is Valid. entirely right. correct. A laborer deserves his wage. But there is a danger that the government has deliberately exacerbated. And that is one that reduces ASU's argument and struggles to that of remuneration. That is why ASU will be telling you, for instance, that there is a 2009 agreement, agreement that paying the salary is not sufficient. But the unfortunate truth is that ASU has become so marginalized in the society that its voice tends to be misread as, those, as serving the interest of only the lecturers. And the focus on the larger society and the failed educational system is mostly lost. And my own intention is to help us to understand that it is in a better position when it is able to communicate to the larger society that the problem is not about the renumeration of the university lecturer, but about the total collapse of the educational system in Nigeria from top to bottom, from primary school all the way to the top is lost. And we're not talking about this. We've reduced the argument to the renumeration of lecturers. And what's, what's the way forward in this now? What would you recommend between ASU and the federal government? <laughs> because like you rightly said, I, th I think the federal government has succeeded in putting ASU in a box whereby making the, the greater populace believe that it's just about the interest of the union that the association is after see, and not the entire educational sector. Every time I get asked this question, I only ever come back to the same point. We can call it whatever name we care to call it in Nigeria. But the reality that must begin to dawn on us very quickly is that our systems are not sustainable. We need to take a second look, not only at our governance systems, okay. but our entire country, make the necessary tweaks. We cannot be existing only for the benefit of the rulers, because now we're in a situation where the entirety of our governance system is geared only to the promotion of the interest of those who rule us without any attention being paid to the interest of those being ruled.
some states that do not have a single ventilator are still busy buying cars for legislators. Some of those states are running universities, and yet the ASU staff there have not been paid. Primary schools are not equipped. So if we're talking about the university system, all that is happening is that we'll be talking in a silo, conveniently forgetting that the problem actually is much larger than a sector. It's not a sectoral problem. Mm. We're approaching state failure. That's the truth. Right. Mr. Deli to me, thank you for your contribution on this segment. And thank you for staying with us. We'll take a short break now. And when we return, once again, President Mahmoud Bari speaks on the legal system in Nigeria. This is up next for discussion. Stay with us. <laughs>